Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got myself a keyboard here that is also a computer. This is the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus. It incorporates a Raspberry Pi 5 computer along with a mechanically switched keyboard here with some cool LED backlighting that I'll show you in a few minutes. And this is something the Raspberry Pi folks have come up with before, but this one feels the nicest out of all of the other ones I've looked at. It also has better specs than we've seen out of prior iterations of their all-in-one keyboard computer combos here. Unfortunately, though, it's still not where it needs to be to be competitive with many of the Intel mini PCs that we've looked at. But there might be some advantages here because it does have a good amount of memory, 16 gigabytes of RAM, along with very low power consumption. So it might do okay as a little Linux desktop slash Docker container server, but it won't have the performance that you can get sometimes for less money that we've seen now out of these Intel N150 mini PCs we've looked at quite a bit here on the channel. So we're going to dive into this and see what we can do. Now before we get into this though, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And of course, this is not a sponsored review. So let's get into it now and see what this little Raspberry Pi is all about. Now, these are selling for around $180. You can find them at Micro Center and a few of the other official Raspberry Pi retailers. I think I bought this one at Vilross.com. I paid about $185 for it. This is about $100 more than the first version of the Raspberry Pi keyboard computer, the Pi 400, that I bought a few years ago. Now, this does have the Raspberry Pi 5 inside of it. It also has 16 gigs of RAM, as I mentioned. Also inside is a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, which it boots from. And what's nice about this is that it pretty much works out of the box. You take it out, you plug it in, and it will boot because Raspberry uh, Pi OS, Raspbian OS, is installed on that NVMe, but of course you can put other operating systems on if you want using the SD card slot here in the back. This does have a lot of the frustrations that I found with the Raspberry Pi 5 computer. Uh, the first one, of course, is that you have these tiny HDMI ports on it, the micro HDMI, so you'll need to get some kind of adapter or a special cable to get it hooked up to what you need to hook it up to. With all this room back here, it would have been nice to see like just a regular HDMI port. Another frustration with this comes with the power issues. Now, this is powered by USB Type-C, but it requires a 5-volt, 5-amp USB-C power delivery charger in order for all the USB ports to get their full power. Without it, you will get low power ratings when you plug in hard drives or things that need to be powered by the USB bus. And believe it or not, although USB-C PD chargers are very plentiful, very few have 5 volts at 5 amps for that particular configuration. Most are 5 volts, 3 amps, so you will need to get a special power supply, even though it's USB-C, uh, for this to work. So I would suggest as you are shopping for this at an official Raspberry Pi retailer, get the power supply because you will get low power warnings if you don't have the right charger to plug into it. And it's a shame they didn't fix that from the original. Also, this doesn't work with Apple power supplies either. So on the back here, you have a USB 2.0 slot. You have a, a pair of USB 3 slots. You have your micro SD card slot here for booting other operating systems. It doesn't come with a card, but of course you don't need that with the internal hard drive. You can swap out that internal hard drive. You unscrew the bottom here, lift the keyboard up, and you can swap it out uh, quite easily. This is where your power goes. You do have two HDMI outputs. It will do 4K60. It will also do higher frame rates at 1080p. When I was testing this earlier, I was able to get it up to 1080p at 144 hertz. Works great. Uh, no issues with that. And then here you've got your GPIO pins under this rubber protector here. And this is one of the hallmarks of the Raspberry Pi because you can hook up all sorts of things to these pins. They're addressable through the operating system, so you can do all sorts of cool electronics projects with these devices, which is something that would require a little bit more effort with a standard mini PC. And then over here you have Gigabit Ethernet. It also has AC Wi-Fi built in that runs at 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz along with Bluetooth as well. So it's really an out-of-the-box Raspberry Pi experience. And why don't we get it hooked up now and see how it performs. All right, so we are on the desktop of the Raspbian OS. And what we'll do first is look at some general computing tasks here. So I'm going to load up the Chromium browser 
We're going to visit the NASA.gov homepage here. It loads up okay. We are running at 1080p, but it is very sluggish now that the page is loaded. And the reason is that there is a video or an animation here that is playing that is taxing the system a bit. So my mouse feels very laggy. It doesn't feel like a very smooth experience even at 1080p. It's even worse at 4K. It's not unusable, but it's definitely a lot more sluggish than what I would see out of an Intel mini PC coming in at the same price as this one. Once we get off the page and onto something that's a little less strenuous, it works just fine here. So there's definitely going to be some sluggishness here as you are playing with it. Now I did run some 1080p 60 video off of my YouTube channel earlier. It was able to keep up with it actually. There was a bunch of drop frames at the outset, but once it started playing, it was running just fine. 4K is a little more challenging, but for media playback, it actually isn't bad if you're looking at browsing YouTube and other things. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 4.54. If you look at that GMK Tech G3 Plus that has the Intel N150 and sells for around the price of this one or less, you'll see that it scores 2.4 times faster web browsing versus the Raspberry Pi here. So although this is a cool little device, Performance-wise, it is not where it needs to be to compete uh, with current mini PCs that are at this budget price point. So that's one knock against it. However, the power consumption on this is ridiculously low. When it's sitting idle, it's in like the four to five watt territory, and it doesn't consume all that much more under load. So the most I've seen this thing consume is about 10 watts or so. So if you're looking to set up your own home lab for the first time, this might be a fun place to start. You got plenty of RAM on here. The processor is not spectacular, but it's good enough to run Docker containers that might serve a few members of your household and all in a really cool little platform to get started with. These don't work well though as Plex or media servers. You'll definitely want to go to Intel for that. But for other types of applications, this might be a good starting point if you were looking for something relatively inexpensive with a good amount of RAM to host everything. Also, the Raspbian OS has a ton of stuff that gets installed out of the gate. Uh, some fun little stupid games here. They have some really good coding applications, not only for adults, but also for kids. So you can start playing around with some of that. Uh, one other thing that you've got here is a full office suite. So they've got the Libre office suite here that actually runs pretty nicely on this device. It lines up nicely with what you might expect with some older versions of Microsoft Office. I covered this actually a few months ago if you want to get more detail on Libre Office, but it's coming installed out of the box right when you boot it up. So there are some redeeming values here, even if the performance isn't great. Let's take a look now at its keyboard, which is worth talking about. Now the keyboard here is a mechanical keyboard. You've probably been hearing it clicking as we've been doing the review here. These are using Gateron switches, KS33 blue low profile Gateron switches. The keycaps are replaceable. You can see the uh, keycap mount there. So it is a nice keyboard, a lot nicer than what we saw on prior iterations of this product. I'm gonna switch off my overhead light real quick because it does have a very nice backlight. So as you can see here, even by default, it's got some caps lock things that can light up here. You have a power button now, uh, so you can actually turn your Raspberry Pi off without having to get a, a special switch. And if I go to the function key here, I can step through some of the different backlight modes. So this is like your standard white mode. I can switch it over to this one. And then if I hit function F3, I can step through a bunch of different colors here and find the one that I'd like the best. So that's pretty neat. And then if I hit this again, you can see you've got like a rainbow effect. They've got a couple of different uh, types of keyboard options you can apply to the backlight. They also have a way you can play a rudimentary game, Flappy Bird, on the keyboard itself. I've got it loaded up here on the command line. And what I have to do is hold down my escape and enter key to count down this timer here. And then it will lock out the keyboard and let the game start. So there we go. The game is ready to go. I can then go over to my keyboard here and hit the space bar to start. And the uh, little green thing here is the bird. And then those uh, blue lights going across the keyboard are what I want to avoid here. So very rudimentary as you can see here, but the game runs on the keyboard. So that's all I've got on this one. To be honest with you, I'm pretty disappointed with it. Although the keyboard is pretty cool. It's got a nice backlight on it. It does drive the price on this thing up substantially. If this was under $100, I would be a lot more enthusiastic, but it is in the price territory of much better performing mini PCs running with Intel chips that can do media serving and other things much better than this. 
This does have a power efficiency advantage. It doesn't consume all that much power. So if you were running server tasks that don't involve media, then this might be a consideration. But at the same time, you might want to look at just a Raspberry Pi computer, which is in a smaller form factor. So yes, it's pretty cool. I do like the retro nostalgia of having my computer be the keyboard but it carries over all of the annoyances of the Pi 5, including those tiny HDMI connectors, the need for a specific power supply just for it. And by the way, that power supply isn't in the box either. And overall, it just isn't what I was hoping it would be. So maybe the Pi 6 line will get more competitive versus some of the other offerings that are out there. When the Raspberry Pi launched, it was a revolution because you got a very functional computer for 35 bucks, but it's a different world now in 2025, and although the Pi Foundation does make some very cool sub-$20 computers, the ones at the higher end of the spectrum just are not keeping up with the competition. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.